Houston, Texas, the site for the Nets. Stone Cold finishers are gearing up to do their thing. They are the best of the best. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant focusing in as they prepare themselves for the task ahead at Toyota Center. Nets, Rockets, don't leave your seat. We'll be right back. Greetings and best wishes for a happy holiday season from all of us at 2K Sports as we get set for this NBA presentation. I'm Kevin Harlan alongside Greg Anthony. Chris Weber is here, our sideline reporter, the Hall of Famer David Aldridge. And with us tonight, basketball expert Bill Simmons. Bill, you look great. Thank you for being here. I'd like to say hi to all the people who traded for Anthony Davis in the GM mode of this game yes. to get him on their team right. when their real team couldn't pull it off. Congratulations. I can't believe you pulled the trade off. And a moment now to look at the year-to-year -year scoring output and how it has been trending for Westbrook. And looking at his offensive numbers from the past few years, it seems like teams around the league have kind of figured him out. Uh, he's having to work a lot harder for his points, and they haven't been coming nearly as easily as they used to. And nothing tips off a broadcast like getting the lowdown from the sidelines. And we've got David. Whatever works, David. Thanks. So the Nets starting five. They've got Joe Harris. Jordan is out there with Wilson Chandler. Then there's Irving. And it's KD in at the three, the small forward. And for the Rockets, Tucker and Capella are up front. Westbrook and Harden, the dynamite pair. They're the backcourt. And it's Green in at the small forward position. And the Rockets building their offense around the three ball. What will uh, that approach look like if they ever want to make a championship run? There's got to be more to it than just the three-point shot. You would think. They've been playing the math, and the math says volume of threes and percentages, and eventually it's going to come in your favor. You believe that's the way to win? I think it's the way to succeed during the regular season. We saw with Toronto, especially in the uh, Toronto Milwaukee series, Toronto was playing those same averages, and then Dan Vliet got hot, and a couple of guys started making threes, and all of a sudden they win that series. So that's a case of it did work. But I still think you need. You need to know what you're doing when everything slows down. And we saw the Rockets two years in a row, like famously when they missed 27 threes. Mm -hmm. Those threes get a lot tougher when it's yes. a game seven, you're tired, the other team's used to you, and the nerves are coming in, and that basket suddenly looking a little smaller. Mm -hmm. What's your plan B? And looks like the illegal that's pick great. was set. Yep, that's right. That'll get their attention. Foul right off the bat. You hate to pick up your first one so quick. Irving against Westbrook. Irving finds Jordan. Good work defensively by Capella. The Rockets perpetually knocking on the door. At what point, though, Bill, do you think their window will close? Um, I think that point happened in May of 2019. I think they had two years to win the title where everything was lined up for them. 2018, they're up 3-2 against the Warriors. The Warriors are tired. They seem like they're fading. They can't close. I think the key for them is the difference between being a regular season team and a playoff team. They're a great regular season team, but the playoffs every year become more and more complicated, smarter, more you got to come up with a plan C, a plan D, a plan E as the series goes along, and their plan A is kind of what they ride with. They get tight. The crowd gets tight. Things slow down. What's your plan B? And they haven't been able to figure that out. You know what you're going to get from Green outside. Now, his three-point shooting is dependable. That's a big part of what he does for this team. Here's KD. Oh, Woo! see that? The phenomenal athleticism from Durant. Man, he's just a tenacious dunker who spikes it in. They're not shooting their first free throw attempt on the night. And they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. Tyson Chandler, who's checked in for the Rockets. For the Houston Rockets, they come in off the loss to the Warriors. Bill, you look at the career path of Kevin Durant. Some guys want to be the man. Other guys want to be a significant part of a bigger picture. He can play a lot of different roles. And I think, and he's so good, that's what makes him so, I think, uh, compelling. Right. He is a guy that can fit into any system and figure out what to do. And I think that's really rare talent. I actually think Larry Bird and Magic Johnson were like that. And 
I'd be willing to. LeBron is, in my opinion, one of the three best players ever. LeBron, you always kind of have to fit into what he's good at. All the teammates that he's had, he's like certain types of guys. Duran is somebody that just loves being part of a bigger team. It doesn't care if he shoots 28 times. It doesn't really want to. He's so confident in his own. He wants pass. He's, yeah. he's an elite passer, and he's just good at everything. And I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I, there's, you, know, you look at, like, your 2K rating. What would be a bad part of his 2K rating? I, he's good at everything. Just solid. Really one of the very best there is at the free throw line. Here's Durant. Again, the Nets for two. He's standing almost seven feet tall. With that kind of skill, that kind of height, athleticism, this mid-range jumper, it'll always be there for Durant. Westbrook passes to Green. Another miss by Houston. Nets have gone three of five, shooting the ball so far. And Durant gets it to go. The assist by Irving. And it's eight points for Kevin Durant. And with the 2K eSports League bill, players not only get a salary, they can also sign endorsement deals. They're celebrities now under themselves. So what what are the endorsement deals that the 2K players sign? Is it like hat? Because you're not really moving. Nobody can, can people see your clothes? They can, right? They can so see your sneakers, clothes. Maybe, maybe it's a hat, maybe it's Drinks. a shirt. All of it. Do the announcers get endorsement Clubs. deals? What are, where's our endorsement deal? Well, if deal they running? don't, we could probably make the stab for it right here. I'm ready. This is, this is the venue I'm, to do it right I'm here. I'm ready to do whatever. Let's change the culture. CTC. <laughs> and their offense already in a flow. Some stellar shooting to jump out to this one. Harden, no good. Oh, he found the open space for mid-range. Just maybe rushed his release a little bit. Pass to Irving. Shoots the three. Up again. It's good on the putback. One thing never changes in the NBA. Jordan will always be there among the top offensive rebounders in the league. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. They just couldn't come out on top last time they took on the Nets. That one was played in Brooklyn. Yeah, just an amazing game when they met them last time out. Talk about a photo finish. Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Annual House has checked in for P.J. Tucker. And McLemore comes in for Gerald Green. Gordon's checked in for James Harden. And it's Austin Rivers in for Russell Westbrook. Bill, do you ever think we're going to eliminate conferences in the NBA playoff seating? I think that they would have done a 16 seed no conference playoff format years ago. I think they're really worried about their travel, though. And they've looked at it, and they've really studied it, and they've looked at the effects of, let's say, Boston plays Portland in round one and you're flying 3,100 miles or 3,200 miles and three time zones and all that stuff, and it's a 2-2-1-1-1 series, what is the effect on the team if it goes seven? I think they're really afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish they did it. I don't like the conferences. I don't really understand them. And over the course of NBA history, they've been really confused by the conferences. I wrote about this in the Book of Basketball, where we had years where San Antonio was playing in the East for a yes, while, yes. and Baltimore was in the West, which, go look at a map. Baltimore being in the <laughs> West is ridiculous. Ba Baltimore was in the West, and Philly was in the East, and they're like 50 miles away from each other. Yeah, they know So sense. they've never really 100% figured out the conference. Conferences. And I just think the 1 through 16 makes more sense. It would sure be better basketball. It would be better. Yeah. Avert against Gordon. Pass to Chandler. Clock at four. Poked loose. There's 38 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Dinwiddie up top. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Here is House. Dinwiddie covering. House dishes to Gordon. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Fearlessness. Gordon using his strength to get off a good quality looking side. Dinwiddie right side. The pass to Levert. Here's Allen. Here now is Dinwiddie. 
And he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. And a double-digit lead on the scoreboard as we end the first quarter of play. Nets lead by 10. We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. At one time, a poor free throw shooter, DeAndre Jordan has really improved this part of his game, and he was asked back when he was struggling if he had ever considered shooting them underhand, like some have in the past. I haven't. I've never tried it. I've never secret. You know, he's made some progress with his method, though. Yeah, him, Drummond, Capella, a lot of the guys who were getting the hack-a-shack treatment have made great strides. And welcome back to the second quarter of action. Plenty of basketball left to play, but this one has been one-sided so far. And taking a look at the Nets' performance here, guys, uh, what jumps out to you, stats-wise? Well, the offense is clicking, and they seem to have seized the momentum here early on. Yeah, how many coaches say, we want to start fast? Now, let's see if they can maintain that intensity. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter to play. Setting the floor for the Nets. Dinwiddie runs the point with Levert flanking him. Torian Prince is out there with Karuch. And it's Allen in at the center locking down the middle. A workhorse on the glass. Capella ready to pounce on misses as soon as the shot goes up. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. That's good from Capella. Bill, you host your own podcast. I've listened to it. I subscribe to it. Thank I you. love it. What do you make of so many NBA players now doing the same thing? Hey, we have a couple of them. We At the ringer, we have J.J. Redick. And we have Vince like Carter and Ken Bazemore. Uh, the ones that are good at it take it seriously. It can't be one of those things where, you know, a player says, you know what, I want a podcast, and then it just magically happens. And you got to work on it. You have to use your connections and book your guests, and you have to be candid on the podcast. You can't just show up and just dabble. And the guys that have been successful at it are people that could probably have a media career for a living. Like JJ is clearly going to go into media after he retires. Richard Jefferson had a great podcast. He's gone into media. He's really good. Yes. So I think you need a little more talent at it than people realize. And you need the consistency of it. You can't say, I'm starting a podcast and then not do it for two months. Like, you have to really stick to it. Now, here's Lavert, guarded by McLemore. Allen. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. That's on Clint Capella. The Nets have made their only other free throw attempt today in an earlier trip to the line. Houston with a big group substitution here. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for Daniel House. Gerald Green comes in for Ben McLemore. James Arden, he's checked in for Gordon. And Russell Westbrook is subbed in for Austin Rivers. A big group substitution here for Brooklyn. Jordan, he's checked in for Prince. Durant comes in for Rodion's Kurooks. Joe Harris is checked in for Karis LeVert. And Irving subbed in for Spencer Dinwiddie. Oh, the officials are all over that one. The Nets have made three free throws so far. Haven't missed any. And, Bill, we've seen more and more teams base their offenses around three-point shooters. Threes are at an all-time high. We know that. Should the NBA, that in mind, do anything to address this via any, any rule change? Which I don't know what that would mean, but, but it has been talked about. I don't like changing. I think it's going to manifest itself with it doesn't work in the playoffs as well. And teams are going to slowly realize like that you need to blend an inside-outside game at least a little bit. You can't lose what the game is. It's no, you, bigs and it's balls, it's inside, it's outside. And, and it's still passing and unselfishness. The Warriors take a lot of threes, but they're the most unselfish team we have. And they create a lot of layups and they play, you know, they're really creative. And you just can't, that just can't be your thing is we shoot 53s, here's our offense. The problem is you're still going to get in these games where two points really matters, you know, and that's what you saw with Kawhi in the playoffs last mm -hmm. year. These games slow down, it's going to be a 92 to 89 ending, and your team needs to get 10 baskets in the fourth quarter, no matter how you're going to get them. 
you still need somebody who can do that too. There it is, guys. One of those effort plays that makes a big difference in the game. And GA, it is definitely making a difference so far today. And Kevin, this is why his teammates respect him. The hustle, the energy. Gotta love it. Great open look there. Green's got six points. They're having more success from three-point range here in the second after a rough first quarter from deep. Bill, you're a basketball historian. We know that. Um, do, do fans romanticize too much about the past? I would say the other way. I think they don't appreciate it enough, especially like uh, the millennials and Gen Z. You know you're out there. You're playing this game right now. They tend to think the league started when Kobe showed up and that the 90s and the 80s didn't happen. I sense a real resentment from the younger fans with the LeBron versus MJ thing because LeBron's their guy. They get to watch LeBron. They don't want to hear that MJ was better than him, mm -hmm. so they make the case for LeBron and the way things are now. You know? What about like the Oscar Robertson, the Elgin Baylors? And we talked about, oh, the, yeah. my, my goodness, you talk about some of these players. Unbelievable. Yeah, the Fantastic 60s, numbers. 70s, 80s. Oh. I think part of what hurts is people can go on YouTube and when you watch some of the older stuff, nobody's playing defense. Mm -hmm. And you can't leave someone open around the rat. He keeps his eyes up, makes a play for his team. And there's the call on Kyrie Irving. That is his first foul of the game. Man, that's it's close, but you know, didn't get on balance quick enough. Andy Rollhouse has checked in for Tyson Chandler. Westbrook against Irving. Westbrook with the bucket. Like how confident Westbrook is close to the rim. Gets high off the ground and releases his shot quickly. Irving drives in. Chandler trying to free himself up. No good from Irving. Bill, we so appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with us. Always feels like uh, there's so much more to talk about, which means we got to get you back here, if you don't mind. Yeah. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> And GA, what a pleasure talk with Bill about this game. He brings that super fan perspective. Uh, from a young child watching games at the Garden, and, and you sense he's never lost that wonder and enthusiasm. Free throw good, Jordan. Well, Mike D'Antoni, uh, he's a, a legendary coach in this game. He's found success at almost every stop he's coached at, only missing the title to cement his leg. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. And with Mike D'Antoni, Chris, you can see his influence as a coach throughout the NBA. Yeah, a lot of modern offenses borrow from things uh, D'Antoni created. The up-tempo early offense is a product of his seven seconds or less era. I mean, his imprint is all over the NBA. Nets leading by 17. Outside Irving. That one, no good. Westbrook with the nice D there. This quarter has been hit or miss for him. Mostly miss. For Brooklyn, they've gone 6 of 10 from the floor here in the second quarter. Here's Durant. Left side, Harris. He kicks it to Jordan. Now, here's Durant. A 17-point game for him in the win against New York. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. There's 39 seconds left in the first half of the game. Westbrook scanning the floor. And the three ball is good. Westbrook's got seven points. Whether he's attacking the basket or squaring up from long range, Westbrook is always dangerous. Outside Irving. There's the triple. For three, Harris. It's rebounded by Houston. And there's the call on DeAndre Jordan. That's his first foul of the game. And the bonus will go to the free throw line. Houston shooting their sixth and seventh free throws in the game. And 74% has been the mark for them on the season thus far. Dinwiddie attacking. No good. Shot missing. And, and typically he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that possession. And so it's the Brooklyn Nets. Their lead at 15 going into the break. They've been putting on a clinic in the paint. Shots are falling with regularity, and they are pounding it down low. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. 
Thanks very much. Kev. All right, thank you, David. And folks, don't go away. After the break, we'll see you right back here for the start of quarter up. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the 2K. It's Brooklyn out in front at the half. They lead by 15. Kenny, what's your take? That was the half of the super sub for them. A lot of offense coming off the bench, and that's such a luxury to have that kind of firepower available. There were times when the pace picked up when the second unit came into the game, and that's the best part, having a bunch of guys who's ready at the drop of a hat. And Shaq, let's get your input on the Rockets. Well, uh, one reason they're getting roasted, a.k.a. blown out, poor rebounding. Way too many one-and-done possessions. I don't want to see guys drip between their legs and shoot. Not enough fundamentals. Hey, box out one-on-one. -on -one. Maintain position one-on-one. -on -one. Learn how to play basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Things like that, Ernie. And that should do it. With the second half about to begin, let's send you back to Kevin Harlan. Go back. Kevin Harlan. Go. Go over there. Well, we've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. Nice game. Great performance by Harris. He's done a fantastic job of finding open space to operate within the first few quarters. Yeah, the offense looks crisp, and guys are hitting their shots. Westbrook and Harden, the dynamite pair. They're the backcourt. Tucker and Capella are up front, and it's Green in at the small forward. So that's who's on the floor for the Rockets. Rocket six. And Tucker kicks to Green. No good on the three. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. And thinking back to when Gerald Green first came into the league, oozing with athleticism, but really not much else. Now he's a completely different and better player than when he first arrived. That is not possible. What we just, <laughs> is that possible? Uh, I think it is, Greg. Not probable, but like possible, like you said. Rockets trail by 17. Harden outside. Here's Westbrook. And he makes the bucket, gets the whistle, and now a three-point play chance here for him. And as amazing as Green was in his dunking as a younger player, he needed to grow as a player. And the time he spent overseas, I think, really helped with his development and confidence. Came back to the NBA, and really since his return, has been a great weapon off the bench for whichever team he suited up for. Uh, unwilling to let up even for a moment. That's his killer instinct just fanning the flame. Oh, yeah, that's what you love about him. He shows no mercy, even with a comfortable lead. Leaping off the ground with such ease. Capella is exceptional with timing. How to finish these alley-oops. Jordan, high post. Back to Irving. Pops it up for Jordan. And really the story of this second half. One team getting the shots they want. The other, not so much. Yeah, you can clearly see which offense is better right now. We'll see if that continues the rest of the way. And here's Westbrook from the arc. And it's Durant with the rebound. And KD's got the ball here for Brooklyn. 17-point game. At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Minnesota where they'll take on the Timberwolves. And that game will be game two of three straight on the road. And the Nets, another three. Uh, the ability to create space off the dribble and get a look is why Durant is going to end up as one of the best scorers of all time. Not quite two and a half minutes played here in the second half. It's Westbrook with the drive. Capella. Oh, and the jam by Capella. Here he comes, and there he goes. Oh, look at him punish that rim. Outside, KD. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. Good shot selection, largely dependent on getting open. Which players do the best job of moving, you think, right now without the ball? Period. Clay Thompson, 60 points, 11 dribbles. Did you hear me? I 60 got it. points, Shocking. 11 dribbles. It almost looks He's like a mystery, sick. doesn't it? Yeah, it is. 
<laughs> Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Daniel House comes in for Clint Capella. And McLemore subbed in for Gerald Green. Irving for three. Connects from three-point range. Irving's got six points in the quarter. The defense is far too slow to close out on those three-point attempts. Dinwiddie against Harden. To the middle. Here's Tucker. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. He's terrific at finding the open man. I mean, good awareness from the floor, from the combo guard. Harden. Irving misses. Tells you a little something about their team. They've been able to pull in front despite his troubles tonight. Here's Westbrook. Allen with the rebound. Allen's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Irving with it, and it's Harden picking him up. Irving finds Durant. The kick out to Irving. In the corner, it's Dinwiddie. Fires from deep. That one doesn't go. And the Rockets take it the other way. Harden has a wide open look. They get the rebound. Tries yet again. Shots good by McLemore. Uh, no basket feels better than a putback. Love getting rewarded for grinding it out on the glass. Irving surveying the floor. And he makes that one. Irving's got 11 points. He's getting hotter the deeper we get into this game. I mean, he didn't give him, didn't give him much of anything in the first half. Now a timeout called by Houston. And the lack of rim protection, top of the list. Without question. They're giving up too many high percentage looks. A trend that they like to reverse. Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Clint Capella, he's checked in for P.J. Tucker. Gordon comes in for Ben McLemore. And it's Rivers in for Russell Westbrook. And then for Brooklyn, Prince is checked in for Rodion's Kurooks. And it's Lavert in for Kyrie Irving. And Greg, when you're discussing and comparing James Harden and what he's done these last few years, you have to do it on a very historic level. He's going to go down as one of the best to ever play the game. His production is incredible, and the skill level really is groundbreaking. Easily the best off guard in the league. Well, yeah, the touch, the timing. You got to know how Gordon is a threat to shoot off the pass. Rivers against Dinwiddie. To the inside. Hell, and a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Well, the Houston Rockets, not exactly a balanced offense. I mean, they lean so heavily on James, but you can't argue with the results. And the Rockets making a change here. Tucker's checked in. Rockets trail by 21. Rivers surveying the D. This is to Tucker. Good. Nice job down low. Tucker's got his second basket of the game. There is the unselfishness that coaches love so much. Rivers doing a great job getting it to the open man. Dinwiddie kicks to Prince. Right side Durant. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. And again, no good by Brooklyn. In the corner, it's Gordon. A three ball. And another three for Houston. Well, you really do have to D up Gordon from deep. I mean, doesn't need much time to get a shot. Up. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. It's the Nets up by 16. We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. Let's hear what Mike D'Antoni was going over with his team moments ago. Come on, guys. Come on. Play our game. Play our game. Get in, Thorpe. Play our game. Come on now. Let's go. Let's go. We got to settle down. You can tell he doesn't think his team is playing like themselves. And they aren't. They, they just seem a step slow at this point. And Coach D'Antoni is just trying to energize them. 
And one quarter to go in a game that to this point has not been an evenly fought contest. Setting the floor for the Nets. Inside, we got Prince and Jordan. Dinwiddie runs the point with Levert flanking him. And it's Harris in at the three. Capella with the bucket. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. And here's Harris from the arc. Green with the rebound. And close to making the defense pay for the lax coverage that time. And it's good for two. Okay, nice job here in the second half. Field goal percentage is way up from what it was at halftime when it was just barely above 30%. Inside, it's stolen by Capella. Shoots from the elbow. And it's Gordon missing. Nets leading by 12. Harris passes to Jordan. Dinwiddie surveying the floor. Hits it from three-point range. Dinwiddie's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. First minute and a half of basketball played here in the fourth quarter. Gordon against LaVert. The drive by Green from down in the low post. It goes. And after an abysmal first half from the field, the shot's now starting to fall. Puts up a three. Dinwiddie's shot is off. A really tough night for him offensively. I mean, I wonder what the score would be if he wasn't so cold from the field. Here's Gordon. Banked in off the glass. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Dinwiddie dishes to Harris. Fires for three. It's stolen by Capella. In the corner, it's Gordon. And again, it's the Rockets from deep. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Dinwiddie finds Harris. Launches a three. And again, no good by Brooklyn. And so it's Rivers with it. He'll bring it up for Houston. They played a great fourth quarter defensive, following only three points. And this offensive explosion has narrowed the gap. Now a timeout called by Brooklyn. And with a fourth quarter push coming up here, the coach going over the game plan and these players rehydrating themselves with Gatorade, recharging their bodies, refocusing their minds, and getting that strategy down to close out the game. And the Rockets making a change here. Westbrook's checked in. The Nets also changing it up. Wilson Chandler's checked in for Torian Prince. Kevin Durant comes in for Karis LeVert. And Irving subbed in for Dinwiddie. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Hey, guys, I was able to catch Kenny Atkinson's message to his team. He said, keep grinding. We're in good shape. Things aren't always going to go perfectly. Don't let that slow you down. Let's just stick to what got us here. Kevin will see if they can build on this lead. Thanks, David. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. I just love the production Capella gives this team. I mean, it is absolutely fantastic. He's their defensive anchor. He finishes off the hoops. He can make nice passes off the pick and roll. And certainly, they are not hesitating, letting it fly from deep here in the second half. Timeout called the Rockets. We've seen Kevin Durant really having a great game. He's running wild. They had to call a timeout just to take away at least some of his momentum. And now let's present our Jordan player of the game, Kevin Durant. He's put on a shooting exhibition for us here tonight. He's missed a couple along the way, but it sure seems like everything's been falling for him. The only way to keep him from converting is to keep the ball out of his hands. Rockets on offense. They're on a 16-6 run. Harden against Chandler. Fires the three. The Rockets again can't hit. Oh, he's got bad shots. This is the time to work the ball inside to get the best shot possible. That's the way to make the comeback happen. 
and how high can you fly? I mean, he finishes that one with some pop. GA after getting loose in the lane with a scintillating move. Here's Harden. Tucker with the ball, Chandler on him, and the wide open shot from Green. And he's good on the three ball. Wow, taking control of the situation and coming through. Boy, are they glad to have Green on the floor right now. In the corner, Irving with it. 136 left in the fourth quarter of this one. That one falls. Irving's got 13 points here in the second half alone. I mean, he's a strong finisher. He exhibits great body control. Irving, he's a special talent. Rockets trail by seven. Passes it to Tucker. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Oh, even from that range, the floater is one of the toughest shots in the game. Brooklyn's gone two of five on three-point shots since the end of the third quarter. Green against Durant. He dishes it to Jordan. KD looking around. Down to five on the shot clock. And slam dunk by Jordan. That gives him the double-double. 11 points and 10 rebounds. And so it's Houston with it. This is a do-or-die possession. They have got to get points. Oh, yeah, a little room for error now. We'll see what they run. His touch has been off tonight, and, and, and now his judgment is off, too. I mean, come on. It's not a smart shot. Out to Harris. Durant against Green. Durant attacking, and the dunk by Jordan. In any lob to Jordan, is as about a sure thing as you can get. So athletic for a big with tremendous hands and big fella knows how to get in prime position for those alley-oop feet. And here's Harden for three. Capella, the rebound by the Nets. Outside Irving. And they pick up two. And it's an 11-point Nets lead. And credit the whole team. It was a focused, concerted effort to put this one away. Yeah, I love how they play for one another out there. No signs of selfishness. They're just a total team effort. Harris outside. Kicks to Chandler. Pass to Irving. And so it's Brooklyn easily grabbing this one. They came in here and took care of business like they were the home team. And, and Kevin, how about the mental toughness that this group showed? They, they were never yes. rattled at all by the opposing fans. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. We'll see you next time.